You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. You ever find yourself living the drone life, traveling from place to place only to figure out that after a while your food choices to find something delicious and healthy have dwindled away? Have you ever noticed it's hard to find something good and all of a sudden you realize you're hungry and you got nothing with you? That's why I pack Charky with me. I bring Charky with me because I think it's better than beef. There's no cholesterol like there is with beef. It's high in protein, low in sugar. There's only four ingredients. So that means there's no nitrates or chemicals. Here's the thing, guys. It actually tastes good and it makes me feel good, which is why... Uh, we decided to have Charky as a sponsor on the show. They really believe that you should be treated the way that I want to be treated or that I should treat people the way that I want to be treated. Just took a trip to Phoenix to watch a little spring training and my bag was full of Charky. Was it delicious? It's always delicious. <laughs> that goes without saying. You can get your Charky right now on Amazon if you search for Charky, C-H-A-R-K-I, or just go to H-T-T-P colon forward slash Charky dot love. Well, guys, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob, and this is episode number 552. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you for sending your questions in. And if you have one, go to askdroneu.com and get it in. We'd love to hear from you. Also, thank you to all the members out there who are a part of the community. If you want to be a drone Operator, if you want to be a certified drone pilot, start a business, turn your passion into profit, then you got to check out the Drone You community where you pay one low monthly price and you get access to all the courses, past, present, and future. Make sure you check that out. Rob, why don't you go ahead and play us that funky question, bald boy? Wow, well done. Hi, my name is Douglas Mock and I am from Lake Elsinore, California. I'm uh, not yet a member of the Drone New community, but I am looking forward to doing so. I'm just waiting to get my drone and sign up and take all your courses. You guys have taught me a, a great deal, which leads me to my question. Uh, out here in California, a very liberal state, and drones are definitely looked at very suspiciously. One of my questions is, especially with doing real estate videography and anything that has to do with the cookie cutter home that's in a housing track, you're inevitably going to have to fly over other people's houses. So my question is, what or how high in the airspace does a property owner have? In other words... How low to homes can I legally fly without violating a homeowner's airspace? The only thing I've been able to find online is a reference to, I believe it was in the 1945, the government flew an airplane low to the ground uh, under approximately 83 feet, causing a farmer's chickens to basically run into a wall and kill themselves. So is there any official hard deck that drones have to fly above over private property. Thanks, guys. I love all that you do. Paul, you're amazing. Rob, you rock the bald head. (laughs) Uh, I'll take that, Doug. Uh, (laughs) Thank you for the question. He will take that. (laughs) Since I don't have a choice. Yes. Um, Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate that. Um, so long in the short, there's no privacy law right now for anyone. There are states trying to pass privacy laws, but they can't control the airspace. So what do we have to fall back on if we are flying over someone's property? Now, for the longest time, you've heard me say, don't ever fly below the tree line of your neighbor's property because technically the neighbor does have or own the usable rights to the airspace, which comes from the Cosby case. And many people have said that that same case, because of interpretations of that case, have ruled that every homeowner owns 83 or 84 feet of their airspace. Right. Well, that's not true. What's true is that they own the usable part of the airspace. And the way that a lot of people have explained it to me, the way I explain it to other people is that and even to cops, well, sir, if I didn't own the airspace where my house is in, how could I build above one inch mm. on the ground 
if I'm not using the airspace? How is my tree going to grow if it's not taking up the airspace as it grows up? In other words, I need to get FAA approval to plant a tree. Exactly. Probably not necessary. And most people are like, oh, well, that's silly. And then you're like, exactly. Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. That's exactly why it's silly. Well (laughs) done. And now I'm going to lead you down the path of you agreeing with me. (laughs) 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 But anyway, um, uh, long and the short is that the photographer has the rights to shoot anything from public space, which is normally what I use as well as information. and, uh, or statements to argue this point is that, look, guys, if you are tasked to fly on private property, if you have permission, which is why we've talked about Legal Flyer and I haven't talked about it for a long time, but that whole app is based on the fact that you're getting private property permission to take off and land. Mm-hmm. There is nothing stopping you from flying over other people's houses. Uh, and in fact, the general rule, and this is from the photographer's right, this is a guide that was created. I'm going to give him a shout out because he's he probably doesn't know I even have this, but his name is Bert Craigs, and he's an attorney out of Oregon, okay. and you can check out his website. So here's a shameless plug for Mr. Craigs, and he doesn't even know I'm talking about him. So Probably never will. Craigs.com. That's K-R-A-G-E-S.com. Thank you for creating this. This is the photographer's rights. In general, the general rule in the United States is that anyone may take photographs of whatever they want when they are in a public space or places where they have permission to take photographs, absent a specific legal prohibition, such as a statute or ordinance, you are legally entitled to take photographs. Examples of places that are traditionally considered public are streets, sidewalks, and public parks. Property owners may legally prohibit photography on their premises but have no right to prohibit others from photographing their property from other locations. You just heard it from the, uh, for the, from the source right there. Craig, yeah. Whether you need permission from property owners to take photographs while on their premises depends on the circumstances. Hmm. In most places, you may reasonably assume that taking photographs is allowed and that you do not need explicit permission. However, this is a judgment call and you should request permission when the circumstances suggest that the owner is likely to object. In any case, when a property owner tells you not to take photographs while on the premises, you are legally obliged to honor the request. The key word is when you are on their premises. So his question is, if I'm flying over other houses, is that okay? And the answer is yes. The answer is they have no rights. The reason I push so hard for legal flyers because it's getting pilots out there educating other people about flying drones and that it's okay and that they're used for good. And and so obviously we don't want to condone this, but what you're saying is that you could fly it 30 feet over a bunch of houses to get to the one that you're actually going to be Mm -hmm. working on. Which again, I still tell people don't fly below the tree line of people's houses because you don't want to give them an idea that you're spying on them. Absolutely. But just in terms of not being fearful about this, you don't need to be. You just need to be educated and armed with the packet, for example, that we're putting together. Yeah. So this form is actually in the Live in the Drone Life field guide, which... I was going to ask Tim about in our month, weekly meeting this yep. morning, but I'm pretty sure it's almost done and on the website. So that will be available soon to members for free. It will be available to non-members, but you're going to have to give us your email so we can say, hey, we see that you love drones. Why aren't you in the drone community? That's right. I like that you're just telling people that. Just Why like, not? This is the way it works. All right, cool. <laughs> so that's awesome. I don't like being lied to. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Uh, anyway, but I hope that answers his question. Uh, again, this form, the photography, right. This is U.S. law. There's a lot of other stuff in here that talks about permissible subjects because you can't take pictures of people that are recognizable. So it talks about that. This should go in the show notes is what we should do with this. Um, yeah, but it's also in the field guide, which has every other piece of material that you would want with you when you're flying. Like if the cops come up to you and they're not educated about drone law, you pull it out and say, hey, look, dude, we're going to have a fun conversation, but understand this is the rules. So, right. So again, we're, be very responsible, be very respectful. Um, respectful, be ready to educate homeowners that are a little bit leery. I mean, just, you know, expect those things and be prepared to respectfully con- conversate with them. Absolutely. But know that you are in the right. 
You can intellectually shut someone down while being very nice. That's all I have to say. That's another one. <laughs> That's the Paul way of talking about Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, like, the mind is such a, um, what's the word? Malleable thing. It can be shaped in different ways based on the... Would you say yours is malleable? Oh, yeah. All right. So I'll um, make sure... I, it's shaped based on environmental factors, what you see on TV, what you grew up with, what you eat, how the stores work. That's all environmental information that you're used to just being used to. You take advantage of it because it's the same all the time. The thing is, is that that's how most things in life are, for especially for Americans. And they go into conversations with a thought already in place, with a solution already at the end. And what I'm saying is that you can take people on an intellectual journey through communication to have them wind up on your side and take them there. And they never knew it. And that's kind of what I'm getting to. Right. It's all it's the most powerful games. thing that you have is your mouth and your brain. Yes, and, and use the brain first. That would be my oh, only yeah. suggestion. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's really... my biggest downfall. <laughs> <laughs> I was not poking any fingers or pointing any fingers. Yes, he was. See, there's no. the finger. <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> anyway, um, no, it's true. I'm very blunt, and that's my downfall, and I'm very rash. Um, and it's something that I have to learn. But my point is, is that, you know, if the mind is always malleable and you understand that, it's really important to also mold your mind to believe if you've never owned a small business that you can, that you're worth more. Like, sure. you know, these are the little things that you're used to understanding that aren't true. You set what's true. You set what you're worth. You're, you set what you believe. And, and the thing is, is that if you understand psychology and you understand how people think and how they create um, arguments and how they create thought processes, then you're better able to communicate with people because you can anticipate, you can listen, and people really want to know they're being listened to, mm -hmm. and then take that information, turn it, and uh, it, communication's so powerful. Ugh. So powerful. It is. So, And, you know, uh, going back to the police officer in Chicago that wants to come on the show mm -hmm. on, like, how to talk to police officers if you're really ever episode. approached as a drone pilot. Yeah, it is really important. And I'm sure a lot of what he's going to talk about is how you yeah. talk. Yeah. How you come across. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Which is so important. It's important with your wife. <laughs> we all know that. <laughs> um, it's important <laughs> with everything that you do. And I'll just say, guys, never assume anything. You're better in life. Just this. It's funny. These vague platitudes just mean so much for so many different things, which is why I'm being vague. So I'm sorry. No, you're right. Assumptions get us in trouble more often than not. True. Absolutely. Well, there's your life lesson there, Bob, and that's going <laughs> to do it right. for us today. <laughs> My name is Paul. And I'm Rob. And you're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. <laughs>